Welcome to Lecture 1, The Greeks Really Knew Ratios. The way that I like to title this talk is A is to B, oh please, I hate ratios, nearly squaring the circle. I remember back when I took SAT classes and took the SAT test, the worst part of the test was the word ratios part, where one word is to a second word as a third word is to pick one of four answers or five answers. I don't think that's part of the SAT exam anymore, so you people who are listening to this have uh, all been saved from that, but uh, back in the day that was really a horrible thing. However, when we look at math ratios, things are not quite as bad, at least for me. It's much easier to understand them. So let's move on and first take a look at areas. There is a very famous problem that the Greeks were interested in, and that was called squaring the circle. Uh, where they wanted to find a square that had the exact same area as uh, a circle of a given radius. They were able to find something where they could show that the area between two circles was equal to the area of a square that had an edge the size of the radius. And this is a quite interesting proof that they have, and we're going to go through the details of it. It was very close to solving the problem of finding the square with the same area as the circle, which is this squaring the circle problem. It has since been proved to be impossible to do, but the proof that the area between two circles makes is equal to a square makes it seem like squaring the circle should be possible. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the assumption that the ratio of the areas of two pie slices from two different circles with the same angles but different radii are proportional to the ratio of the squares of their radii. And that's illustrated for you graphically here. We have two circles. One circle on the top is a bigger radius than the one on the bottom, but if they all are sliced into slices that have uh, the same angle of the slice, then the area of those two regions are related by the squares of the radii, just like the areas of the circles are related by the squares of the radii. And this even holds if we subtract from each of those green pie pieces a triangle that would be formed when I drew a chord on the circle and remove the inner triangle. So it says that the areas of the regions with a chord to the edge of the circle are also related by the same ratio. And that's actually the fact that we're going to use in the proof. Okay, on to the proof itself. Here is the picture. We have our two circles. The black one is radius 1, and it's centered at O. The red one is radius square root of 2, and it's centered at O prime. We determine that it's radius 2 because you can see it, it forms a right triangle with the radius of the black circle as two of the legs, and so by the Pythagorean theorem, the length of the red dashed line is the square root of 1 plus 1, which is just the square root of 2. What we want to do is we want to prove that the red hatched area is equal to the green hatched area. Now the green hatched area is the area of a square that has a radius, uh, a edge equal to the uh, size of the radius of the black circle. And the red hatched region is the area in between these two different circles. And while it looks like this might be possible that those two areas are the same, it's by no means obvious that uh, that must be true. So that's what we're going to be proving. Okay, our first step is to put a point D along the vertical line, the vertical radius that goes through O and intersects the black circle. And then we're going to draw lines AD and BD that intersect that point D. And you, you're going to see that those lines indeed form a right triangle. I'll have a little bit to say about that in just the next step. Um, the angles AOD and BOD are right angles by construction, essentially, because we have horizontal and vertical lines there. The angle AO prime B which is the same as the angle ADB, is also a right angle. And that is not so obvious necessarily to see, although it clearly looks like a right angle in the picture. 
and you're going to actually prove in general that that is a uh, right triangle on the homework. Step three, the ratio of the areas of these uh, regions between the circle and the chords, and there are three different ones, one labeled alpha, one labeled beta, and one labeled gamma. The ratio of the area of alpha to the area of gamma is equal to the ratio of the squares of the radii. The radius of the black circle is 1. The radius of the red circle is square root of 2. So the ratio of those areas is 1 over square root of 2 squared, which is just 1 half. So you can see the area of alpha is 1 half the area of gamma because each of those slices has the same angle. They're both 90 degree angles for those slices. Similarly, the area of alpha is equal to the area of beta. So because alpha is equal to beta and gamma is equal to twice alpha, we have the interesting identity that the area of alpha plus the area of beta is equal to the area of gamma. All right, the next thing we're going to focus on is this triangle in the center, A, B, D. That triangle has a, is a right triangle with legs that are each square root of 2 in length. And if I look at computing the area of that right triangle, I just take the product of the two legs and multiply by a half. So I get a half times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is equal to 1. So the area of triangle ABD is equal to 1. The area of the upper semicircle is 1 half the area of the circle. So that is equal to pi r squared times a half. r is equal to 1. So the area of the upper semicircle is just equal to pi over 2. But it's also equal to triangle ABD plus alpha plus beta. But triangle ABD has area 1, and alpha plus beta has area gamma. So we learn pi over 2 is equal to 1 plus gamma, or pi over 2 minus gamma, which is going to be the area between the two circles, is equal to 1. And that is indeed the area of the square, because the edge of the square was equal to 1. So to summarize here, the area of the semicircle minus upper semicircle minus gamma is equal to that red hatched area. And we've just shown that that red hatched area has area 1, which is indeed the area of the square, which is the green hatched area. So we've shown the area of that crescent given by pi over 2 minus gamma equals 1 is indeed equal to the area of the green square. So this proof itself is an intriguing proof, and it really hints that it might be possible to square the circle. And this is, I think, the reason why the Greeks spent so much time trying to figure out whether or not they could do it. But it turns out that you actually can't do it.